Okay, so I've been using the laser for, what, close to a year now? And it's been a total blast and I'm loving it. Um, there was one thing I never really did, so I thought maybe now would be a time to experiment. And that is um, add a little fourth axis so I can um, do some tube cutting. Um, yeah, so this should be relatively simple. Um, I have a stepper motor driver that I'll need to wire up uh, to the controller, which uh, the cord was supplied, I just never hooked it up. And yeah, hook up this uh, fourth axis. Maybe I'll have to make some kind of a uh, little bracket to, I'll probably try to mount it to the T-slot, maybe either up here in the front or on the side or somewhere. And then uh, we'll do some experimenting. This uh, stepper motor says it's uh, 1.7 amps. So I need to set the dip switches on my driver here to the correct current. Off, on, on. All right, cool. That should be good. All right, I have one little spot left here in my uh, controller area, so I think I'm gonna drop it right about there. Let me just grab a screw here. All right, I took apart the connector here to see what uh, colored wires were the, for the pins I need, and uh, I made a little note here. So, I'm just gonna set it right here for now. I've uh, soldered up a wire to connect, so now I need to route it around back to the motor driver. Okay, everything should be wired up. Uh, I still need to route this cable, but I'm gonna wait to do that to see how it works and where it makes the most sense to mount it. So, let's uh, fire it up and see what happens. I've got the machine turned on, and now whenever I uh, jog the U-axis, you can see it rotating. I think that's the fast speed, there's a the slow speed. Okay, now that the rotary axis is all set up, um, before I actually start to cut anything, I want to test how the following system is going to work. Should be fine for the round tube, but a little unsure about how it's going to work with the square tube, so let's test it out first. Alright, I've got my rotary set up right here in the front. Set at two millimeters uh, offset, but um, most cuts are usually like around less than a millimeter. So I'm not sure that this is going to work. But I'll test it and see what happens. I think the round tube is going to work just fine. All right, here I'm going to put the follow all the way down to 0.5 millimeters uh, for the round tube, and we'll see if that should work fine. I think. Okay, I'm in Fusion 360 and I've set up a test file here and uh, down the length of the tube I've made this little slit so that I can convert it to a sheet metal object and unwrap it. So if I go here and uh, click on the flat pattern, uh, you'll see how it unwraps. Then I can export this uh, DXF file and open it up in my other software. So I've imported my DXF file into RD Cutist. It's a software I have to use with the Ruida controller. And I'm getting it set up here and I'm trying to figure out how to make it work with the rotary. And I'm seeing almost no options. Only thing I can find is right here under this other parameters tab, there's a tube cutting enabled mode. And um, that's all I'm seeing. I even dug around on the controller itself trying to find out how to make it uh, use the U-axis because um, uh, I tried to test run the file and it still moved um, the X-axis. So not sure what to do here. So I just got an email back from the supplier and uh, even though it has these buttons that to me would clearly imply that the U would be the rotary axis, that's not how it works. According to the Supplier, I have to, I can't use the U or A axis, I have to use, they told me the Y axis, but I have uh, two servos hooked up for the Y axis, so it's going to be a pain in the butt to do
do that. So I'm using the x-axis and they said I have to unplug the x-axis and plug in my rotary there. So I've done that and now the um, the uh, thing I overlooked was uh, that it can't home anymore because um, the uh, limit switch is connected to uh, the x-axis uh, wires right there. So um, I just, I have a switch here. I'm gonna wire one up here real quick just so I can hit it with my hand to uh, tell the machine that it's homed. All right, there we go. Now I have a little switch. Whenever it comes time to home, I can just click it. And we'll see, we'll go from there. We're about to go in the weeds and it's gonna get real boring for a minute. So here first, enjoy some laser cutting for your viewing pleasure. Alright, I got the file all set up in here and I'm able to dry run it right here and it runs the program which is awesome. Here I'll show you. So it looks like it's cutting out what I, what I intended to, but um, uh, if you notice this, there's major speed differences between um, when it's moving the Y axis or the rotary axis. And um, though it's pretty easy for me to calculate uh, the distances to get everything to cut where I want, um, given the uh, diameter of the tube, um, it's gonna be really difficult for me to control the speeds because uh, I really don't want to start messing with the parameters for my regular x-axis uh, servo drive um, in order to make it work also with this uh, stepper motor and driver. So it just occurred to me that maybe I'm going about this uh, totally the wrong way. Maybe I should I already know I can uh, wire it up to the u-axis. wonder if I can just set up the file and export the g-code and then go through and do like a find and replace and change all the x-axis movements to be the u-axis. That way I can leave everything wired up and configure the motors independently. Um, either way, it's gonna be kind of a hassle to go back and forth between flat cutting and tube cutting, but um, if that would work, that seems like that might be way easier than um, just changing some code than uh, going through all these physical changes every time. All right, so I'm gonna try that and we'll see what happens. So it turns out that the RD cut a software exports this .rd file type and it's not human readable code. So I guess back to plan A. Okay, so I figured out plan A isn't too bad after all. Uh, all I need to do is cap the max speed of the rotary axis and not have to change a bunch of motor parameters. So let's give it a shot. Make my file a little bit different so every, all the curves are actually round. 
but uh, actually surprised to see how much it burned through the other side. Um, but um, yeah, interesting as a first test. Let me uh, try setting up a file again and see if I can get that a little bit better. I don't know what happened, but my first model I realized was not even to scale. So I'm redoing it again with the correct circumference and I'm making the test file a little bit shorter so I don't go through all my tube trying to figure this out. I've imported my file into RD Cutist and my rotary axis is configured to make a full 360 degree rotation um, at uh, 100 millimeters. So I'm scaling out my uh, file here to be 100 millimeters on the x-axis and then let's run it. Okay, here's my second test and that definitely worked this time. Um, Everything looks like circles where they're supposed to be circles and everything's to scale properly. So yeah, I guess that's my workflow is uh, design it in 360 to scale and then unwrap it as a flat pattern, import that into uh, RD Cutist and then scale it along the X axis um, to be 100 millimeters. Uh, so it will make uh, exactly 360 degree uh, rotation for that 100 millimeters and yeah it looks like it, it worked just fine um, so now I guess let's um, uh, explore square tube um, I'm a little concerned uh, if the following system is going to be able to uh, follow that sharp turn around the edge uh, uh, without uh, causing an error okay I've set up a test file for the square tube and I've made sure that it's actually to dimension this time. So I'm gonna get that unwrapped and export the DXF file. Okay, I've got my DXF file imported into RD Cutist and I've scaled it out to 100 millimeters. And I'm poking around in the software and I'm realizing this is just never gonna work because I need the software to treat it as like four flat planes and then it rotates 90 degrees in between each one. Um, and that's never going to work because I no longer have an x-axis hooked up. So, yeah, I think I just found the major limiting factor for tube cutting in this software. But uh, let's just run it anyways and see what happens. Alright, we're going to try this. I don't really expect it to work, but uh, hey, let's see what happens. Oddly enough, like it made it around the corners just fine. Like right there. But then it started jittering, uh, you know, on a more flat area. Well, I guess we learned something today. Uh, round tube cutting with the Ruida controller, totally possible. Square tube cutting, I don't think it's gonna happen. So I guess if you need to cut square tube, the more uh, costly option would be to buy a Frendis controller that can support their 2 Pro software. Uh, that looks pretty nice. Um, the cheaper possible option might be to try to run a fiber laser off a standard CNC controller that can run G-code and uh, jump through some hoops uh, and try to get the sheet cam software with uh, their tube cutting plugin to work, which might be something I try to do in the future, we'll see. Uh, coming soon, I have uh, some video about uh, retrofitting the CNC mill, so that should be cool. Uh, thanks to all my Patreon supporters for making this happen. Thanks, guys.